What's up, tricksters? Today I'm sharing with you my personal Kovacs training routine that got me into top 74 Radiant players in Valorant. This playlist is the ultimate aim training for games like Valorant or CSGO, which means that it will improve all of your raw mechanical problems, no matter which problems you have or which rank you are at this moment of time. You can use this as your training routine if you're Iron or even if you're Radiant. This routine is basically better replacement for my ultimate aim lab playlist, and after you watch this video, I highly recommend you to check out these two guides as well, because there I've explained some very important topics such as how to properly improve your aim, how much training you should do, what are the training rules that you should follow, and how to properly use third-party aim trainers. But before we start, there's one question that I get a lot as a Radiant coach. Which aim trainer is the best, and should you use Kovex or AimLab? To be honest, every aim trainer is good to focus on improving your raw mechanical skill as fast as possible. They're like your personal gym, but for different type of muscles, which is your aim in gaming. We're literally hyper-focusing on highest repetition in the lowest amount of time. Both Kovex and AimLab are great aim trainers, and in my opinion, the best ones on the market right now. The only difference is the quality of these two gyms, and how much you're willing to spend on them. AimLab is free to use on Steam, very simplistic and user-friendly to towards the beginners, so if you're just at the start of your journey in FPS games, I'd recommend you to maybe start practicing with AimLab. While Kovacs is around 12 bucks, a bit more complex, but you can gain much more from this software. There's enormous amount of great tasks and playlists that go extremely deep into fixing very specific problems of your raw aim. I think that Kovacs is the king of aim trainers right now, while AimLab is slightly behind. I'm not sponsored by any of these companies and I would recommend you to use both of them because variety in your training can help a lot when it comes to fixing specific aim problems that you might have. When I'm developing aim training plans in my coaching sessions, I use in-game routines, aim lab, Kovacs, basically anything that can help players fix their mechanical skill as fast as possible. And if you also want to fix your gameplay problems in Valorant and reach higher ranks as fast as possible like hundreds of other players, make sure to visit my official Discord server and check out my private professional coaching programs for your personal improvement. Also, here is one giveaway for you in this video. One person from the comments will get my exclusive coaching program that consists of 20 plus hours of pre-recorded videos that I've never shared anywhere before. These videos will teach you everything that you need to know about Valorant in order to improve your gameplay fast and fix all of your aim problems. Down in the comments, tell me why should I pick you as a winner for this this coaching giveaway. Now let's start with my ultimate Kovex training. First thing that you need to do is download Kovex from Steam, install it and open it up. In the description of this video you can find the import code for my playlist. Copy that code, go into Sandbox Browser, Online Playlist and paste it in this text box right here. Or you can simply search in this text box, Valorant Ultimate Training by Charlatan. Click on Download button and you're ready to start with this routine. But before we actually start, we need to adjust your Kovacs settings in order to maximize your training benefits. In main settings, put sensitivity scale to Valorant and mimic your in-game sensitivity settings. I'm using 800 dpi with 0.42 in-game sensitivity. All other settings you can copy paste from here and one setting that will be changing every single task is your field of view. Make sure that FOV measurements are set to Valorant and you'll get specific FOV settings for each task that you perform. It's very important when you're doing some kind of aim training to be versatile so we can focus on wide specter of different mechanical problems and to make that routine as best as it can be so the time that we spend aim training is actually beneficial for us. Any aim training is okay but not every aim training is going to provide the best results for you. When it comes to all other settings, you can adjust them as you wish or simply copy paste them from me. The only thing that I recommend you is to use a dot crosser because some tasks require extreme precision and bigger crossers will make these tasks almost impossible to perform. And in video settings, make sure that application is running in the full screen mode at all times to prevent a bit of input lag. 
And now we are ready to start with a breakdown of this aim training. This specific routine I perform after my in-game training method that I've explained in my previous aim guides. One day I perform my aim lab routine and the second day I perform my COVAX routine. I usually recommend to my coaching students around one hour of aim training daily after your last game of Valorant, before you hit the bed. My aim training consists of 30 minutes in-game routine combined with 30 to 40 minutes of aim lab or COVAX. And before every single gaming session, you should have around 20 to 30 minutes of proper warm-up. When this video reaches 2000 likes, I'm going to share with you my Radiant warm-up routine and how to properly use that match for your improvement. So if you don't want to miss that one, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn your notifications on. This playlist is following all of the aim training rules that we've discussed in my perfect aim training method video. This routine is easy, medium and hard, meaning that it's well balanced and gradual. This routine is focusing on all of the raw aim problems that you'll have in games like Valorant and CSGO, but you can also use it for any other FPS game. If you want, you can change some parts of this playlist to suit your personal needs a bit better, but in my opinion, it is all around training that will improve anyone's aim to higher levels. Even though I'm a Radiant player in Valorant, former professional CSGO and PUBG player, by using this routine for one month I've improved my aim for around 10%, so I really don't see how an average FPS player couldn't benefit from this playlist. But if you do notice that your raw aim isn't improving after one month of using this routine, you're either doing something horribly wrong or you need to adjust this playlist to suit your personal needs a bit better. And anyways, on every two or three months, you should be changing your routines to tackle different problems with your in-game skills. In this routine, you're going to find 20 different tasks. Some of them are Kovacs default tasks, some of them are community tasks, and some of them are specifically customized and improved by yours one and only Radiant Coach. I just made them a bit harder and a bit more beneficial for your improvement. Each of these tasks you're going to perform two times in a row. For the first time you're going in the slow mode, meaning that you should focus on keeping your accuracy as high as possible. Don't go too slow like a Grandma Josephine, but you don't need to rip your hands apart. For the second time you're going in the fast mode, meaning that you should sacrifice a bit of your accuracy and try to build up your reflexes. You don't want to go too fast where you're missing a lot of the shots and building bad habits, but try to sacrifice around 10 to 20% of your accuracy for higher speed and snappy flicks. When it comes to your high scores, use them only to monitor your improvement over time. Nobody gives a crap if you're the best player in aim trainers, you should focus on building good habits, fixing your raw mechanical problems and implementing these techniques later on in Valorant to dominate ranked matches. And one more question that I get asked a lot. Can I use different sensitivity in aim trainer compared to my in-game one? And the answer is absolutely yes. Yes, you should use your in-game sensitivity and also two or three different sensitivities for different tasks. If you have extremely low sensitivity with which you cannot perform some of the reflex tasks, I do recommend you to hire it up. And if you have extremely high sensitivity with which you cannot perform some of the micro adjustment tasks, I recommend you to lower it down a bit. Using different sensitivities in aim trainers can actually be extremely beneficial for you. But this topic, topic of muscle memory and some other questions, we're going to cover a bit deeper in my future aim guides. Because right now we need to do the rest rapid fire guide on how to properly perform every single task in my ultimate Kovacs routine so that you're not wasting your time like a boosted bonobo. At number one task we have Tile Frenzy Mini and we are starting on a bit lighter note here. In this task we just want to warm up our hands with our vertical and horizontal micro flicks. Whenever you're performing some kind of a flicking task make sure that the line between the first target and the second target is as straight as possible because that is the shortest path between between two different positions. If your flicks have some kind of a curve, that is impacting speed of your aim in the negative way. For this task, in your Kovacs settings, you want to use 60 field of view. For the second task in this routine, we have Valorant small flicks that should be performed on 115 FOE. In this task, you want to focus on your horizontal flicks and try to make them as 
smooth as possible without any micro jittering. On third place, we have Tile Frenzy 360 tracking at 125 FOV. While performing this horizontal tracking task, make sure to hold your fire mouse button at all times. Once you start shooting at one target, make sure to completely destroy it before switching to another one. Try to flick as fast as possible between different targets and to never stop your mouse movement throughout this task. Throughout this whole routine, you can use my handcam as a reference on how you should properly perform these trainings. For our fourth task, we have Taller Wall 6 Target Small at 115 FOV. With this task, you want to practice your macro adjustments and vertical aim. Once again, make sure that your flicks between targets are as straight as possible and go for the clusters. What are the clusters, charlatan? Basically, try to kill two targets that are the closest to each other. On fifth task, we have overhead jumps at 103 FOV. Once again, when you're practicing these tracking tasks, you want to hold your fire mouse button at all times and try to never stop your mouse movement. What you want to do when you're performing these tracking tasks is use your whole mouse pad and reduce the amount of mouse liftoffs to bare minimum. Try to never reposition and lift off your mouse to the center of your mouse pad, unless it's absolutely necessary. On number 6 spot, we have pressure aiming with 10 targets on 125 FOV. This practice we used to polish our decision making. Always go for the targets that are about to pop out in your face and then focus on smaller ones. For the seventh task, we have horizontal poke ball at 103 FOV. This one is very simple and easy. You cannot make any mistakes. We're trying to polish out your flicks to be as clean and precise as possible. On number eight, you can find revolving tracking that you should perform at 95 FOV. This tracking task is following all of the rules of overhead jumps and tile frenzy 360. One thing that you can try to do here is to keep your crosser always at the same vertical head level of these two targets. At 9 task we have easy reflex flick at 103 FOV. With this task you should focus on building up your speed and reflexes while keeping your accuracy as high as possible. Make sure to always have an anchor point for your crosser placement in the middle of this shooting range, flick towards the target, kill it and then reposition your crosser back to your anchor point for the next gunfight. On number 10, we have Flicker XYZ at 85 FOV. In this task, you want to follow all of the rules from overhead jumps, while also focusing on fast and snappy micro flicks on the target once the target changes its direction. At 11 task, we have Static Speed Test at 103 FOV. In this task, we are just following the same rules from the taller wall with 6 targets, focus on straight flicks and clusters. On number 12, we have wide wall with 4 targets at 103 FOV. This task is great for building up precision of your large angle flicks. For our 13th task, we have passu tracking at 85 FOV. When you're performing this tracking slash flicking task, you don't want to randomly flick around and try to kill targets in this absolute chaos. Make sure to lock onto one target, track it, and then when you're absolutely confident that you're 100% accurate, go for the kill. And then perform fast flick onto the next target and repeat this training. This task is great for building up the discipline in your aim. On numero 14, we have low strain training at 85 FOV. Perform this task in the same way as the static speed test, but make sure to also pay attention on precision of your shots. Try to always go for the headshot on these small moving targets and the whole point of this practice is building up prediction and precision in our aim. At number 15 we have small vox target switch at 103 FOV. This task should be performed in the same way as style frenzy 360 and passu tracking. All of them are great for working on your fast aim corrections. For the 16 task we have 6 wall 18 targets practice at 103 FOV. The whole purpose of this practice is to work work on your 180 horizontal and vertical flicks. Basically, we're working on your ability to kill enemies that appear in any direction on the map, from any angles. When you're doing this task, don't just focus on targets that appear on one wall. Try to make this practice as hard as possible. Go for two targets in front of you, two targets behind you, two targets above you, two targets below you. Try to minimize the amount of mouse liftoffs that you make and figure out some
some kind of a patterns that you want to use in this training to make it more effective. On 17th place, we have medium reflex flick at 103 FOE. When performing this task, use the same method as you did in the easy one and focus on building up your speed and accuracy. For our 18th task, we have close flick at 103 FOE. In this practice, try to switch between targets as fast as possible and focus on having smooth horizontal aim. On number 19, we have hard reflex flick at 103 FOE. This task is same as easy and medium ones, but the difference is that you want to rip your hands apart and rely more on your muscle memory. This is absolutely the hardest task from this playlist. You won't have a lot of time to think about your shots. You need to use your peripheral vision in order to spot the targets fast and rely on your aim sense in order to kill them. Soon I'm going to explain the topic of aim sense and how to train your peripheral vision, but for now this content is still locked behind my coaching sessions. Basically don't think too much, rely on your feelings for the aim movement and develop your reflexes to godlike levels. And for our last task we have pistol strafe gallery at 103 FOE. In this task you want to focus on your micro flicks and adjustments. Try to hit targets one time in the head and one time in the body in order to kill them. And absolutely avoid randomly spamming your shots at their body like a gorilla. Also when you're performing this whole routine make sure to do it in this specific order because there is a lot of in-depth thoughts and professional experience behind this training. And that wraps up my ultimate Valorant training with in-game aimlab and Kovax routines. But this is not the end, we still have to cover many other gameplay and mechanical guides for you, so if you don't want to miss this juicy content in the future, make sure to hit the subscribe button, turn your notifications on, leave a like and comment. Check out my twitch.tv forward slash charlatan channel for some live tips and solo queue shenanigans, join my official discord server if you want to improve like hundreds of other players with my professional assistance, and down in the description below you can find all all of my other social media. I'm yours, one and only, Warden of the Tricksters community. Thank you for watching and cut, baby!